Oh, Steph, busy in news as well. Let's begin here. A British grandmother making history as the first person in the world to receive the Pfizer vaccine outside of a clinical trial. 90-year-old Margaret Keenan, this is her, receiving the shot here at her local hospital in central England this morning. Among the others getting the first injections, that is William Shakespeare. The 81-year-old pensioner getting his shot close to the birthplace of his namesake as Britain hopes to encourage everyone to get vaccinated. And as we've been telling you all morning, yes, uh, the U.K. vaccination has begun there. But here in Canada, we are still awaiting to hear whether the Pfizer, Moderna or Johnson & Johnson vaccines have been approved by Health Canada. However, in a statement yesterday, the prime minister announcing an early shipment of vaccines will be coming this month. The premier has some cautions as well, though, that we do have a long way to go. It's been a difficult year and we're not out of the crisis yet. But now... Vaccines are coming. Our first shipments of a very small number of doses could arrive as early as next week. But we're still very far, and I got to repeat that, very far from having the millions of vaccines we need for mass immunization. And we are also learning more about the team tasked with the vaccine rollout here in Ontario. One of them, part of the team, including infectious disease expert Dr. Isaac Bogosh, who joins me live now. Good morning to you, Dr. Bogosh. It's been a while. Hey, yeah, it has. Good to see you. You've been a little bit busy. So let's, uh, let's begin here. Just a little bit. Um, thanks for taking the time for us this morning. Let's begin with uh, the UK. And it's interesting when we look at the timeline here to, to see that we've you know, heard more about this virus within 2020 and have a vaccine, uh, people being inoculated in 2020. Your thoughts on just that whole process? It's absolutely wild. It's wild. I mean, it's just such a monumental event today to watch the first people vaccinated in the Western world with, a, you know, a, what appears to be a safe and effective vaccine for an infection that we didn't even know existed 12 months ago. I mean, this is just such an incredible feat, for, and, and it spans, you know, science, public health, medicine, but it's also you know, political. Like, there's just so many stars that had to align for this to be successful. It's just unbelievable. I also love how you showed that the second person to be vaccinated was William Shakespeare. That was fantastic. <laughs> Very poetic is what we were saying, right? Uh, let's talk about here at home now. Um, you sitting on this vaccine task force, that, that is a big job ahead, a lot of pressure on your shoulders as well uh, with this team. What does your role entail and what are you advising the team here? I bring a medical and scientific viewpoint to the table and certainly we see many other uh, people at the table that bring a diverse uh, background and, and uh, knowledge and expertise. And quite frankly, we're going to need all of that uh, to really help drive what I would consider you know, safe, expedited, data-driven, and equitable vaccine distribution throughout the province. Uh, certainly, you know, we know who's at the table, but I think you're going to start to see broad consultation, especially uh, to, the, to really make sure that people who are getting the vaccine are, are represented and that people have a voice. And, you know, obviously this is new. This is new for everybody. This is a, still a new infection, even though it's a year old. This is still a new vaccine, uh, even though we have some of those clinical trials that have been completed. And uh, it's really important to listen to what the concerns are of Canadians and, and really address those concerns, but also make sure that we can get as many needles in as many arms as possible, because the faster we do that, the faster we get back to normal. Logistics-wise, um, from your consultations, what are your recommendations on who should be priority? We've heard sort of the general rollout on sort of long-term care homes, um, Indigenous communities, those in remote communities as well who can't uh, necessarily travel to somewhere. Um, what are you suggesting for who should be priority? Right. So it's really helpful because at a national level, not the provincial level, but at a national level, there was some guidance that was really evidence based and, and uh, that was put forth about a week ago. And it really I think we're going to see a lot of the provinces stick very close to that. And Ontario sure did. And yesterday, Ontario announced that they're going to be uh, prioritizing exactly who you discussed, you know, people in long term care. Uh, frontline healthcare workers, indigenous populations, like basically people who are at greatest risk of getting this infection and people who are at greatest risk of having a severe outcome from this infection. And, you know, it's going to take a bit of time, right? We, we don't have control uh, over you know, when the vaccine is going to arrive. Of course, I, I appreciate that there's contracts, but we're really relying on foreign companies and foreign countries to produce and, and send us this vaccine. So when it does arrive, uh, we'll, we'll be prepared to immunize those 
target populations when uh, using the limited resources that we have available in terms of limited vaccines that we have available. But as vaccines become increasingly available in, in 2021, you can, you can expect to see a more broad rollout to the general community as time goes on. Dr. Bogosh, there's still a lot of people who still aren't sure about this. As you mentioned, it's new. Um, so to see an expedited timeline makes a lot of people nervous um, when it does get rolled out to the general population, whether or not they feel like they want to get it, because we know it's not going to be mandatory. We heard the premier say we can't make people take it, but we just ensure we, we hope that people will. So how do you um, ease some of these tensions, ease some of that anxiety? What would you say to anyone who's watching right now that is sort of sitting on the fence when it comes to a vaccine? Yeah, I think it's a completely reasonable for people to have questions, right? It's a new virus that, well, not a new virus. It's a new virus that we just learned about a year ago, uh, but and, it, and it's also a new vaccine. And uh, I, I think it's important to re recognize a couple of points. One is that, you know, when we look at the process of how this vaccine was developed, it doesn't appear that, that any corners were cut. They did the requisite uh, scientific studies, and then they did the requisite human trials, the phase one, the phase two, the phase three clinical trials that's done with any product that's going to be released onto the market. And then they also have, you know, evaluation of this by independent government bodies. For example, Health Canada is still pouring over the data. Uh, the FDA in the United States is still pouring over the data. And, you know, you have to have independent bodies evaluate the data to determine if it really is safe and, and, and effective and, and ready to roll out in your country. So the process is sound. There doesn't appear like there were any corners cuts. But even with that, even with that, I think it's reasonable to expect for people to have questions. And I think it's important for the medical, the public health, the scientific community to listen, to take those seriously, to address those, to uh, express what we know and what we don't know, and to keep a steady stream of information flowing. And it's obviously a two-way street. We need to listen and be receptive and responsive to the concerns of the general public. And we ha have a responsibility to update people with information as it comes in in real time. So it's a huge responsibility on behalf of the medical, public health, scientific communities. And, and I, I think we're taking this uh, we're taking this very seriously because we really need as many people as possible to get this vaccine. Dr. Bogosh, as always, we appreciate your time. And I'm glad you're sitting on that task force. I, I'm a wealth of knowledge that you'll be providing there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.